Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today I'm dealing with the topic of batch painting and base design. Enjoy this video and we'll see each other again after the intro. I hope you have a wonderful good day and welcome back on my channel The Fantasy Edge. I'm glad you tuned in again today. Today I'm going to talk about batch painting as well as the topic of basing your miniatures. If the camera doesn't focus well in some places please forgive me a bit. I'm still trying to get used to it and also I'm constantly trying to improve the quality of my videos. As usual lately I'm working with the Army Painter Speed Paints 2.0 again. And like in my previous video, which you can find here, once again I'm using the slap chop method. Batch painting, which means painting a bunch of miniatures together at once, it's usually also the way I personally paint my miniatures the most. Because if you know my videos a little, you know that I'm not necessarily looking for perfection. For me, it's more about achieving a certain standard with my miniatures so that I'm able to play games with them. This also means that if I can paint figures like this, then really anyone can do it. My time is always a little bit limited, so I always try to find a good middle solution for my hobby. And the minimum of quality is simply having painted figures and a base that is not only made out of plastic. And while I'm chatting you up a bit all the time, the attentive viewer may have already noticed how I proceed with batch painting. I choose a specific color and then paint different parts of my figure with it. A shade of brown for one figure's shirt is then the color for the trousers for the next figure and so on. Not only do I want everything to look less uniform, but it also saves you a little bit of your resources. Fun fact, when I painted this figure I somehow had to think of the Defias gang from World of Warcraft. That's why I decided to paint his color here in red. <sighs> Good old days. Anyway, let's continue with the text. Because let's be honest, often far too much color comes out of the dropper bottles. And the paint that you don't use dries up. But by painting several miniatures at the same time you can use the paint really well. In addition, the figures got a wash again this time and I used Reikland flesh shade for it. As I've mentioned before in my last video, painting eyes is an absolutely optional thing. This time however, I just felt like practicing a little bit and so in the end all the bandits here actually got eyes. It doesn't matter if you do it or not. The important thing is that what you do with your figures is fun for you. If it's not fun, don't do it. What I'm also not very good at is highlighting figures. This means that the surfaces of the figure which are higher and on which the light falls are brighter than places where the light does not reach. But here too I wanted to be brave for once in my life and give it a try. And honestly even if it doesn't look masterful in the end you can see the effect and I was glad to have done the whole thing that way. It's also important to deal with new things and try out new things, especially in our hobby. Otherwise you will never know in the end whether it might not be worth it after all. Which is actually a good piece of advice for life, but let's not get so philosoph philosophical. Philosophical? F philosophical. Man. <laughs> but let's not get so philosophical here. Unfortunately English is not my mother tongue so the word was a little difficult for me. I just didn't want to keep it from you how I'm failing. <laughs> so here I'm just gluing the minis on a small plastic base. Normally I would do this with a plastic glue but since these are self printed miniatures I prefer to use super glue. From my experience it just holds better. 
So the figure itself now looks quite okay. To top it all off, let's start with the base design. I'll show you how I do it. I always organize some old plastic container that I can fill with water. In general, everything you can pick up and wash out on plastic containers is really worth its weight in gold for the hobby. The second thing you need is wood glue. I always have a bucket full here. And last but not least, what I like to use the most to base my miniatures is soil. This is pretty normal soil that I got from the garden. The only important thing to keep in mind is that you put the soil in the oven and bake it at 200 degrees for about 30 minutes. This causes all the bacteria and other stuff that lives in there to die. After that, you can use it wonderfully. If you do, please be warned that the smell that will be created will be a little unpleasant. However, this quickly evaporates after a good ventilation. So with a veteran brush, I take a little wood glue and mix the whole thing with water. This allows the glue to spread quite well on the base. What I do then is that I trickle the soil onto the base. I deliberately don't dip the base into the ground because that often causes accumulated spots that I don't want. In this way the whole thing is distributed quite evenly and pretty. And in my opinion simple soil from the nature simply looks best in miniatures. Of course you can also spend a lot of money on base design materials. But stinking normal soil from the garden is my way to go. Of course if you want something special as a base then you have to resort to alternatives. But really 99% of the time, when I'm designing bases, I'm using either soil or bird sand. To give the whole thing a little variety, I also like to use such tufts here. Small tufts of grass or even a few flowers on the base simply aims to make you just like to look at the miniature as a whole. But again, I think to myself, less is more. The base is somehow just an accessory to the actual figure. If I want a little grass, then I like to use this little can here, a puffer bottle. The static grass in there is supposed to charge up a little bit by shaking it and then land upright on the base. From my own experience, it doesn't work so well, but in order to bring grass to the base a little bit at all, the can serves its purpose here, I think. Last but not least, I paint the edge of the base so that the ugly plastic doesn't shine through so much. I always like to use a shade of brown which then blends in more with the ground. And that's it for today's video. Here you can see how the figures look in their final state, ready to terrorize the surrounding poor villagers. For those of you who are interested, these are figures from Vae Victis that I 3D printed myself. 
All of them, except the gentleman with the meat cleaver, come from their modular set of ruffians. Personally, I love the figures of Val Victis. The design of the figures is simply brilliant and also the printing process for the supported figures is super easy every time. At this point, many thanks to Val Victis, even if I don't get anything out of it. But it really doesn't hurt to just say thank you sometimes. Thanks for watching. If you want to help me, please subscribe to this channel and give me a like. Have a nice day. Yours, Lars, from the Fantasy Edge.